Hello and welcome to Austin Bergstrom International Airport. Today we are going to be flying with KLM on their direct route out to Amsterdam. Austin has been experiencing an onslaught of traffic on the departures level for quite some time, so we'll start our journey by heading down to the arrivals level. Heading into the airport, we can make our way up the escalator to the departures level and over to KLM's check-in desks. The airport is a mess of lines and masses of people all trying to get to their final destinations. British Airways just opened their check-in desks ahead of their flight out to London Heathrow, and the line of people extends well beyond their allotted space, making navigation a nightmare. We made quick work of the check-in process and can head on through security. TSA PreCheck is again a game-changer, getting us through security in just a few minutes. With that out of the way, we can head over to our gate. Our flight today, KLM 668, is departing out of gate 3 on the east end of the terminal. Checking the screens as we arrive shows that everything is still set for an on-time departure of 6pm. Despite this, our aircraft still hasn't arrived from the westbound leg from Amsterdam which leaves us with some time to take a look around. Waiting patiently at gate 2 is one of British Airways' gorgeous Airbus A350-1000s, getting prepped for its flight across the pond to London Heathrow. Including KLM and British Airways, Austin sees four transatlantic flights, with KLM serving Amsterdam, British Airways and Virgin Atlantic serving Heathrow, and Lufthansa serving Frankfurt. One great feature of the airport that I always try to check out while I'm here is the outdoor terrace located at the end of the terminal. Heading upstairs, we can get some excellent views of the British Airways A350K and our soon-to-be-arriving Boeing 787-9. The thick fencing up here makes it difficult to get good shots of the ramp, but we can make do with what we have. The A350 is a gorgeous aircraft, and honestly, I would have preferred to be flying on one out to Amsterdam, but the 787 is just as good. We've actually had the incredible opportunity of flying on one of Delta's A350 900s in Premium Select. If you missed that video, click the link in the top right or in the description below to check it out. We're only up here for a few minutes before our aircraft touches down on runway 36 right and taxis over to gate 3. The beautiful blue of KLM's livery has only been a feature of the ramp here for a few months. KLM started operating their route to Amsterdam on March 28th, and I actually believe we were the first passengers to book tickets on today's flight, as we made travel arrangements in the months prior. Our aircraft finishes up its taxi and parks up at gate 3 to deplane. Seeing wide bodies in Austin has always been a rare sight, but to now have two parked up next to each other is an amazing feeling. I can't wait to see what the future holds for Austin's roster of long-haul international flights. As the ground crew works their magic to get our plane turned around for the flight back to Amsterdam, we can head back downstairs to get ready for boarding. Just as soon as I got back down, boarding began. With the scan of the boarding pass, we can head down the jetway and onto our gorgeous Boeing 787 Dreamliner. We're seated today in seat 30A, a window seat in the exit row of the main economy cabin. Exit row seating is always great, with tons of space to stretch out. The only unfortunate aspect is that the slide extends out from the door, which limits the theoretically unlimited legroom. The standard economy seats on KLM's 787s offer a rather cramped 31 inches of pitch and 17 and a half inches of width, so the extra space afforded by the exit row is a welcome addition. 
The tray table is stored in the middle armrest and extends up and folds out across the seat. It's decently large, but I don't think it could support a larger laptop if you needed to get some work done. The in-flight entertainment screen folds out from beneath the middle armrest with a simple latch release. The system boots up pretty quickly, but on startup, all passengers are required to watch a two and a half minute video on KLM's COVID precautions before continuing on to the actual entertainment. There's no apparent way to skip the video, so I would recommend starting this process as soon as you sit down. I'm not really in need of the screen at the moment, so I'll store it back below the armrest. On the inside of the inner armrest are three buttons to control the lights and attendant call button. The placement feels like an afterthought, and it's extremely easy to accidentally bump the light button with your leg, which is super annoying when the plane is darkened on an overnight flight. For power, each seat includes a standard outlet in addition to the USB port on the entertainment screen. The seat back pockets have been relocated to the wall just beyond the window, and holds all of the safety information cards, sick bags, and magazines for the whole row. Seeing as this is a long haul overnight flight, KLM includes a blanket for all passengers and a pillow upon request. One rather annoying feature of this row is the fact that the window is located just behind the seat, which makes it rather uncomfortable to look out of when not reclined. Our cabin crew closes the boarding door and we can push back from the gate to begin taxiing out to runway 36 right. As we taxi out for departure, why don't we take a quick look at some stats about our aircraft. Taking us to Amsterdam today is Papa Hotel-Bravo Hotel November, one of KLM's Boeing 787-9 Dreamliners, delivered on January 25th of 2018. All of KLM's 787s are named after flowers, with our aircraft taking the name of Morgenstern, or Morning Star in English. Each 787-9 is powered by two GENX-1B engines, producing 71,000 pounds of thrust for a total of 142,000 pounds. 787-9s have a total length of 206 feet 1 inch, with a wingspan of 197 feet 3 inches. Each 787-9 has a maximum range of 7,635 nautical miles with a cruising speed of 561 miles per hour or Mach 0.85 at an altitude of 43,000 feet. KLM operates their 787-9s in a three-class cabin with 30 world business lie flat beds, 48 economy comfort seats, and 216 standard economy seats for a total of 294 seats. If you're enjoying the video so far, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. I have a ton of awesome content coming, so stick around if you want to see more. We soon reached the end of the taxiway, turned onto the runway, and began our takeoff roll for this 9 hour and 15 minute flight out to Amsterdam. Flight climbed up and out of Austin airspace, cruising across the Texas landscape. The first service came just after we leveled off at our cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. 
included in the first service was a pair of headphones, a half liter of water, and a sanitizing wipe. The first service didn't include any food, as dinner would be served in about half an hour. Before dinner, though, let's take a look at the bathrooms on board. The bathrooms on board are pretty spacious. Being located in the middle of the aircraft, the bathroom height isn't limited by the slope of the airframe, which leaves me with plenty of space to stand up. Additionally, everything appears very clean. The sink works well with touch controls to adjust water temperature. The soap is almost full and should remain so for the entire flight. All paper products are well stocked, including the usual selection of tissues, toilet paper, and paper towels. Lighting in each bathroom is aided by the LED strips integrated into the main mirror. The diffused bright LEDs combine with the blue accent lighting to create a welcoming environment. An additional feature that I didn't expect were the wood or faux wood floors. The traditional gray flooring is replaced with an appealing dark wood, which looks very nice. Even if it is fake, it still adds a touch of class to a very functional facility. Overall, it's very nice. Heading back to our seat, we can take a look at the in-flight entertainment offered on KLM. Included on board are a wide selection of movies and TV shows, flight information, instructions to access in-flight Wi-Fi, and other services. Flight Path 3D is KLM's go-to for the in-flight map. Included are plenty of ways to view the map and our route, plus multiple virtual onboard views with left and right window views and my personal favorite, the cockpit view. The cockpit view shows airspeed, altitude, heading, pitch, and roll overlaid on a virtual globe below. The sun began to sink below the clouds beyond, casting yellows and later vibrant oranges across the landscape below. As the sun kissed the edge of the horizon, dinner was served. Dinner tonight included a penne pasta dish with a side salad, roll, and a carrot cake for dessert. Aside from the dessert, the food didn't look all too appealing. The pasta looked to be undersauced and the salad significantly underdressed. That being said, everything tasted better than it looked. The pasta was flavorful but still could have used more sauce and the salad did have dressing on it just at the bottom of the container. The roll was actually a fruit and nut roll, which really did not fit into the meal. What really should have been a savory pairing to the pasta was instead sweet and frankly unwelcome. The carrot cake was definitely the highlight of the meal. The cake was moist and sweet, with just a little bit of crunch from the crumble on top. I think I would give the meal about a 6 out of 10. It certainly wasn't bad, but the lack of sauce and the strange sweet roll really detracted from the dining experience. With the sunset, the evening twilight filled the window, with the lights of towns illuminating splotches of the landscape below. After the cabin crew cleaned up the dinner trays, they came back through with an offering of after-dinner drinks. They said there was coffee, tea, or water, but I bet if you asked for something else, they wouldn't hesitate to provide. I went with a cup of coffee, which in hindsight was not a good idea, but at least it tasted good. Having finished up the last of the service, the cabin crew dimmed the lights so everyone could get some rest. Almost immediately after dimming the lights, however, the cabin crew came by for another quick dessert option of a gluten-free brownie and a bottle of water. The brownie was very good, and the bottle of water was a welcome refreshment. Having finished off the last of my brownie, I turned off the lights and settled in for the night. Sunrise came somewhere over the North Atlantic, the tinted windows doing their best to block out the sunlight. 
the new day had brought little change to the cloud cover below, a thick white sheet shielding the ocean from the sun. As we grew closer to the coast of Ireland, the clouds finally gave way and the first signs of land could be seen. Breakfast was served not long after we reached the coast. Included today was an egg and cheese sandwich, a bowl of yogurt, and a selection of fresh fruits in addition to the usual offering of drinks. Opening up the packaging reveals a fairly mediocre looking sandwich. The ciabatta itself looks pretty good, but the egg and cheese in the middle were not as appetizing. The Dijonese on the sandwich had a strange tang to it, but beyond that, it tasted pretty good, all things considered. The fruit and yogurt were pretty standard stuff, which made for a very filling meal. For me, the breakfast rates a solid 7 out of 10. The filling selection was welcome after a long flight across the Atlantic, and the fresh fruit was surprisingly good. We left the UK behind, crossing the English Channel before beginning our descent into Amsterdam. Our approach into Amsterdam brought us south down the coast before turning east for arrival onto runway 6. After a quick taxi around to gate G6, we can deplane into Amsterdam Schiphol International Airport. Sitting next to us at gate G4 is Papa Hotel Bravo Kilo Alpha, KLM's first 787-10 adorned in KLM's 100-year livery. Heading through the jetway, we can make our way into Terminal G and on to the exits. Before we can leave the airport, however, we must first pass through passport control. The line here isn't too long, and it appears to only include passengers from our flight. The security officers make quick work of the growing queue, and we are soon on our way through. Leaving passport control, the long tunnels eventually spit us out behind the baggage claims on the lower level. Following the signs, we can make our way out of the airport and into Amsterdam. And with that, it's time to end today's video. If you're new around here, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free and it really helps support the channel. If you liked the video, drop it a like too. There's a lot more incredible content on the way, so stick around if you want to see more. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for flying with me, and I'll see you in the next one.